All right, let's go to more bad news for the poor old hapless Chris Bowen and his push on electric vehicles. Today, Toyota is the latest automotive company to come out and say that the pace of the government's new vehicle emission standards is simply not feasible. Toyota's warning comes at the same time as new analogies shows just how fanciful Bowen's ambition is, with only 25% of current vehicles in the market able to meet the standard that's supposed to come into effect at the start of next year. For more on this, I'm joined now by senior motoring journalist Paul Gover. Well, Paul, I tell you what, he's opened up a can of worms with that uh, emission standards a couple of weeks ago now. I mean, we could do a story about this every night because it's not just Toyota. You, as I understand, are talking to a whole lot of manufacturers. They are very concerned, aren't they? Oh, they're hugely concerned. They're hugely concerned about their business, obviously, but what they're really concerned about is the impact on customers. I was talking to a CEO of one brand today who said the first thing that's going to happen with all of this is that people are going to keep their dirty, smelly cars for longer. So Mr Bowen's actually going to cut the sales of new cars, make them more expensive and convince people that the best choice for them is to hang on to a car for longer. What about these standards, though? I mean, if only 25% of cars in the marketplace now can meet the standards and they're due to come in in under 12 months' time, realistically, I mean, the government's got to back down here, don't they? Smart people would back down. And it's not a case of backing down. All the companies I've talked well, to Bowen's agree not smart, but anyway. that we need to have... Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. A, a, lot of, a lot of people agree, everybody agrees we need to do something, but it doesn't need to bang them in the head on day one. What needs to be looked at is the glide path over the next five years and set the standard based on we're starting on this day at this level and it comes down from there. What they're doing at the moment is going to enforce penalties on just about every car maker except pure electric brands from the beginning of next year. I think this next story is um, telling us something because Apple likes to make money and it's always ahead of the curve. Um, what did you make of the news this yep. week that Apple is abandoning its plans on electric cars after 10 years and billions of dollars of development? They're walking away from EVs. What's it tell you? What it tells me is what I'm reading every day in the global press. Early adopters rush to have electric cars. The people who are fans of Elon Musk and think he's saving the world rush to electric cars. What's happening, it's around the world. It's in America, it's in Europe, it's everywhere. When they take the incentives off, when there are no government incentives, people don't buy these things. But also, car companies are now admitting they're losing money on making electric cars. Ford even split the company in half. They have an internal combustion half. And the job of the internal combustion half is to make the profits so that they can do electric cars because they're losing money on their whole electric business case. And I would say that's the same for most of the car companies around the world right now. Paul, how likely is it that we'll go away from combustion cars, sure, but we'll end up with another technology? Like, we'll go back to where we were a couple of years ago, really exploring hydro. Could that be where we end up? Yep. OK, so two things. We're going to get a lot more um, hybrids. And the good news for pickup drivers is that next year Ford will have a plug-in hybrid version of the Ranger. But I've been in... I was in Germany just last month. I talked to a guy who works at Porsche. Now, don't judge me for being at Porsche. But basically, he's saying e-fuels. So this is fuel you make in a laboratory using uh, renewable energy, CO2, CO2, taking CO2 out of the oxygen, and you make a liquid fuel. And he's saying, and he's got lots of research and they're spending a lot of money, he's saying e-fuels can save the world because unlike electric, you can also develop it to be used in planes and boats as well as transport. And I think of all the things I've heard, there's a lot of talk about um, using hydrogen either in combustion engines or to the, have a fuel mm. cell, which is the same thing I have on spacecraft. This, to me, makes the most sense of anything I've heard.